our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. The August sun is warming the Andøya rocket base in northern Norway. This is where the first European CANSAT competition is being held. Organized by the European Space Agency, it brings together teams of high school students from all over Europe whose challenge is to build a satellite that fits inside a soda can. They have two missions. The first is to transmit information measured during the flight. The second is up to them to choose. There are two types of experiments which they have to perform and they have to be successful. The one is primary, uh, primary uh, experiments is to receive data that are already transmitted by default by the uh, kit that is provided to them. Temperature and sen uh, um, okay. pressure, pressure. pressure. <laughs> and uh, earth mag magnetic field and uh, acceleration and uh, global position. And, uh, yeah. my last, my last they have then to invent and pro um, submit a secondary mission. Objective. For instance, some teams decided to have an airbag, others to film the flight, others to have a GPS to reach a point in the ground. There are different missions, and when we selected the 10 countries' representatives, we chose teams that were representative of the countries, but also of the missions themselves. Last pep talk before the launch, the teams are ready. Well, not quite. Some are still struggling with last-minute technicalities. But others are confident. Yes, it works. We hope so. All the documentation from headset is he do and do this. Yeah, he will. I change my sheet every single bit. The teams head off to the launch pad just a few kilometers away. Each team is backed by an adult, usually one of their teachers. I'm trying to be a sort of a tutor and uh, trying not to, not to help them too much, but also try to guide them and help them with equipment and, and also since the students is this is quite new for them with the programming and the electronics it's everything is new for them minus 10 9 8 7 the whole procedure is the same as for a real rocket launch there's a countdown a sounding balloon and a number of security measures to follow The small rocket that's used to launch the can is a well-known model. The nose cone is about uh, one and a half meters high. Uh, it uses, I think it's 250 grams of propellant, uh, like uh, gunpowder almost. Um, and it reaches about a kilometer of height. Four, three, two, one, fire! The rocket, along with the students' two small can probes, are intact as they finally touch the ground thanks to their parachutes. Just to get things to, to work in practice is often an experience they never try to solve. And often they find out that perhaps practice, practice is more difficult than theory. The students barely take time for lunch as they work on their small machines, which have all the same functions as a real satellite. It's an excellent way to learn more about space technology. We have uh, in our strategy a, a general objective which is to support the efforts made at European level to attract uh, more students towards uh, the so-called STEM area, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics field. And this is because Europe needs uh, people working more in this domain uh, to be more competitive. Done it. I've left that stupid pad that goes underneath here there. 
There are some last-minute hitches, but the teams always help each other out. Yes, go and get some fun. There is teamwork, which is important. And I saw today, for example, uh, teams of different uh, countries helping each other because we have problems at the very last moment. And they are, uh, you know, providing the uh, competing teams with uh, tools if they had problems. And I uh, have to say also that uh, things that they've been doing these days are reproducing on a smaller scale what uh, in the future I hope m many of them will do in, uh, if they work in the space environment. It was the British team that won this year's competition. But according to the director of the National Centre for Space-Related Education, which backs the project, they were all winners. The ten teams have impressed all of us with their, uh, uh, with their efforts and their creativity and the way they have uh, run this uh, competition. So, uh, in my opinion, and uh, on behalf of all uh, the involved uh, staff at uh, the Rocket Ranger, we think they are all winners. The winner is chosen by a jury of space professionals who analyze the mission results as each team presents theirs to the whole group. Although it was the team from St. Paul's School in London which came out on top, everybody was delighted with the experience. It's been long days, they've been brilliant though. Full of activity every day and always busy on the go. La competizione e quindi questa... This competition opened up my mind and I'm thinking of studying electronics further. I find it very interesting. It's been a great experience, absolutely great. Uh, we have learned so much about teamwork and just working under pressure. This working on a real project really shows you that uh, this is an interesting area. We learned how to be a team with the other kids, uh, cooperate and uh, also we learned things that we didn't know such as science, maths and uh, geography and many others. Happy and fulfilled, the students left and they are proud of their work filled with enthusiasm and dreams. The European Space Agency hopes their stay will have inspired them to pursue a career in the space industry, where engineers and scientists are badly needed. My name is Ida Bernud and I come from Sweden. My name is Lorenzo Dallari. Gregory Meletoglu and I'm from the third uh, Lyceum of Midlin, Lesbos. My name is Roisin and it's an Irish name and I go to school in Lauren Hill. Julie and Lucy. Belgium. 